I could just quickly jump on that for a second. Uh, two quick things about too many years doing this. Um, number one, always listen to the parents of special needs kids. Just shut up and ask them how the kid's doing, what's normal, what's not normal. Save yourself a lot of hassle. They're brilliant people. Um, I've seen the most limited parents step up so beautifully to this, and it's, it's their precious child. The second is, how many, if I ever want to get love and affection in the world, I want to be with somebody with Down syndrome. Have you ever, ever been with a Down's child? Do they not love everyone? And they're kind of proof that almost perfect is perfect. So that was wonderful. Um, what would Richie Cantor do? So basically we're going to ask you for questions about tough cases. But since I basically have no respect for anything you say, um, <laughs> no, if for the sake of time, I'm going to do questions that keep coming up in my residency who are idiots. But, um, and I'm going to give you questions. And this is sort of like stuff I've put together over some time, and I can do 80 of these. But I picked up ones that are, are cases you're going to see. And we're going to move. A three-year-old presents with limp and fever. All markers are elevated of inflammatory or infectious causes, uh, white count, said rate, CRP. Hip tap is negative, ortho's off and running. They went to the gym. Um, ortho signs off the case, what do you do? Greg Henry was here, he's still here. Every, nobody leaves the ED without walking off. This child still won't walk. What is your next test? Your next test is an abdominal CT looking for a psoas event or an MRI and a bed. I park these kids, I let them sort themselves out, I never send them home. A three-year-old returns from play, altered level of consciousness and asymmetrical neuro deficits. One pupil bigger than the other, weak on one side, weak on the left. That kid smells, sounds, and looks like trauma, some CNS abnormality, the CT scan is normal, you're looking at the concept of a CTA, an MRI, an MRV, who pick, pick, a, pick an algorithm, a mnemonic rather, what are you going to do? Well, why don't you get a sugar? Do you know that hypoglycemia is the only metabolic cause of asymmetric neurologic deficits? Well, it is. And the second leading drug prescribed in our country is oral, hyp oral hypoglycemics. So my take home is ABCD dextrose stick. I lecture on this all the time. I make the same mistakes you do. Measure a sugar. We, we spent a billion on this kid. We gave her some D10 and she woke up and she took grandma's gliburide. This is a classic tox case. A two-year-old presents with profound lethargy and a history of vomiting, nothing else. CBC and electrolytes are normal. You scan this child, he's so out of it, you're so nervous about him. He's got no response to Narcan, and in essence, there's no excuse not to use Narcan. What are you going to do with him? You don't understand where to go with this. He's under the altered level algorithm, but a child with just vomiting and uh, no diarrhea does not have gastroenteritis, as we do know. So what am I going to do? I am going to get a sonogram and find that he's intussuscepting. How many of you have seen intussusception present with lethargy? Enough said. Basic stuff. A six-month-old presents with profound rotaviral diarrhea. You've all seen this. He's one of the 30 in your waiting room. And his SATs are 86%. He gets in your room. You put in a SAT monitor on him. It's 86%. What do you do when you see that? You put it on his other hand in case the other half of his body is doing well. Um, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you're all idiots. <laughs> he has no response to 100% oxygen. Bingo, somebody got a gas on 100%. Look at the PO2, it's sky high. His OSAT hasn't budged. He's failed hyperoxia. The gas pretty well tells you that he can dissolve it, but he can't carry it. Chest film shows a good heart and a good lung. What do we do next? What test do you want? You want to get a methemoglobin level. Methemoglobinemia is very common, more than we think. And we've got a lot of drugs that can cause it, but in essence, you've got to consider nitrates generated by profound diarrheal illnesses. A five-year-old presents with fever, red sore throat, and torticollis. Yet another sore throat in your ED. Big deal. You get a rapid strep. It's negative. If you don't have that, you can play some games. You look in the throat. It's red. The neck, it's a little tilted, but no real nodes, nothing you can put your finger on. Spinal tap, you decide to drop a hammer because the neck doesn't move as well. Is normal. What do you do? Do you treat him as a, maybe just a muscular strain? You scan the neck. I preach and preach on this. The soft tissue infections we see in the neck are rising, and without a CT scan, you're not going to pick it up. And the last thing I want to talk about is migraine in a 15-year-old girl. Her CT is normal. 
You do routine therapy, pick, a, pick an algorithm and a pr procedure you use, whether it be fluids, composite, or Reglan or Benadryl. You go back in the room, 99% of the time you're a hero because they feel great. Off they go home, but she's not Betty. She's not better. You must tap her. And I talk about this a lot. Uh, pseudotumor is creeping lower and lower in age groups. I, I, the paradigms are not dependable. Be aware that you have to keep in consideration this illness in young, young kids.